I'm Adi Shard. And I'm Duncan Cowie. Uh, we're the owners and directors of Fleming Yachts. Uh, we're stood in the Tunghua shipyard in southern Taiwan, where every Fleming has been built since 1985, when the company was founded. Adi and I have, have been working uh, here at Fleming Yachts for uh, nearly 20 years each. And um, we both worked with Tony Fleming for, for quite a number of years uh, before Tony uh, disengaged uh, rather than retired. And that was about, we, we officially took over 12 years ago now. There are over 340 Flemings cruising worldwide now and hole number one, uh, which is a Fleming 50, is still uh, alive and well and cruising. It's based in Alaska. And here at Tungwa today we've, we've got uh, 11 boats under construction. Behind me is the uh, 78, that's hole number 10. Uh, over there we have a 58 in the test tank and we have 355s in the shed in front of me, uh, hole number 251, 252, 253. And that's very normal uh, production for us here at Tungwa. It's incredibly rewarding to be able to see something turned from the raw materials yeah. into a fantastic finished product which is going to be somebody's dream. It's, 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 there's great pride it's very, in It's very satisfying. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's great to be creating something. Uh, you know, we start off with raw materials coming in, drums of resin, rolls of fiberglass, electrical cable and pipe, and gradually over the months, I mean, a typical build time could easily be anywhere from nine months to 18 months at the different stages as the boat progresses and we get to see each, each stage all the way through to the final finished product and then we'll, we're on board sea trialling. And when we, when we sea trial here, we actually move on board the boat and we live on board for a few days. It's a really good way of testing all the systems and we do a lot of our development there. We, we sit on the boat quiet evening, uh, we think about new ideas, it's a really good atmosphere. So we're, whilst we don't own our own Fleming, unfortunately, we are able to, to use them in that way and that, that really helps as well. The way we approach boat design at Fleming is like a blend of art and engineering. First and foremost, the function has to be right for use at sea, for safety, for reliability, but it has to look good too. AD has obviously inherited Tony Fleming's eye for, for a nice line, for the right design to get the right proportions. I'm a little bit more function over form, and um, I might be more one side and Aidy's more the other, but we, we meet in the middle, it, it, work, it works very well. We make sure that everything we do not just works properly, but looks beautiful. Uh, at the moment, we're typically building 14 or 15 boats a year. Uh, depends on the size, size range, of course. Um, but that's been pretty consistent, certainly for the last uh, five years. To date, there are just over 340 Flemings in the world uh, cruising. Uh, we, we try and keep in touch with, with all the boats, um, where they are, uh, change of ownership. The owners are part of a, a Fleming family. And it doesn't matter if you bought the boat new or used, or if you're the fifth or sixth owner, you're, you're joining a fairly small club. Um, that 340 boats is over a 35 year period. So it gives you an idea, our, our sort of volume is fairly consistent over, over that time. One of the great advantages about having the Fleming essentially be the same boat on the exterior, the same shell, the same model, after over 30 plus years, is that the design can actually evolve over time through years and years of feedback from customers and people who really use the boat in all conditions all over the world, you get that feedback and you can tweak the design. Not necessarily huge changes, but just slight subtle changes. So over time, the boat evolves organically rather than you needing to design it all from scratch on a piece of paper every two years because you need to come out with a new model. Especially the 55, which we've built for so many years, 250 hulls now. It's to a point where it's almost hard to change anything because everything has settled just where it needs to be. We're also keen to use the, the latest technology. 
yeah. and, and, and incorporate new systems um, that make, the, make boating safer, uh, ease of access. We, we log a lot of data as well. So we, we record how the boats are used and then we use that to further the design. Uh, the boat I'm stood on is a, is a brand new Fleming 58 which is uh, in the, now in the testing phase so we're probably about eight weeks away from sea trials and shipping. Uh, so because the boat's floating it's a great opportunity to run main engines, generators, all the air conditioning, all the uh, electrical systems, shore power, this is when the burning system is commissioned and the representatives from each supplier will be here to inspect their system and to, to run their system and test their system. And there's a series of checklists that have to be carried out for each piece of equipment. It's very good to get this done before the sea trial. So we know everything is working um, without load. And then on sea trials, obviously we have the propellers installed and we can run the boat under load. Uh, and that's really main engine testing. Every Fleming is, is slightly customized to the owner's requirements because we only build the boats to order. So depending what equipment the customer's chosen, which appliances, which electronics, um, the wiring diagram is uh, specific to that whole number. So every boat has a full set of drawings as built. At the yard here at Tonghua, we have uh, two teams of electricians that work on different groups of boats. There's about a dozen um, trained electricians working on that team. Um, the lead electrician, Mr. Yang, who I work very closely with on the, on the design and, and installation, has been with us now for over 20 years. He uh, does excellent work. On every Fleming, we have three isolated 24 volt battery banks. Uh, it's very important to keep them isolated. So we have one dedicated for the port engine and genset, one for the starboard engine and genset, and then a much larger house bank that we use for uh, powers all the house loads, the lights, the pumps, and so on. Uh, it also powers a big inverter system, so it allows us to run a lot of AC loads like the microwave, the dishwasher, even a water maker, and some air conditioning when the boat's underway. So that reduces the number of hours on your generators, which reduces the amount of oil changes. So it's a much more efficient system. Battery technology uh, is constantly improving, and we're we're looking now into using a lot more lithium ion battery systems. They allow us to get a larger capacity in a smaller footprint, smaller space. They also save weight uh, and they can be recharged uh, a lot quicker than traditional lead acid batteries. All the wiring on every Fleming is tin copper and it has a very high uh, insulation rating. We use 105 degrees C cabling, uh, so we're fully compliant with ABYC and the CE. Uh, guidelines for uh, electrical installations. Uh, every cable is numbered at both ends and the number is also on the drawing so if you're troubleshooting it's very easy to find where the wire is, where it runs uh, and to, to find the source of the problem. The Fleming First Mate system is custom made for us by Burning in Germany. Uh, it's a completely custom system for Fleming. It's very similar on all our models. Uh, some of the large boats have slightly more information because they have more systems. Uh, so Tungwa install the whole system, everything's wired up, and then an engineer from Burning in Germany comes to the yard and does the commissioning and an inspection on every single boat. And we get great support and service uh, from Burning. Today we're on a brand new Fleming 58. This is hole number 29. And, uh, we're going through our typical uh, final uh, end of construction testing. So this boat has already been in the test tank at our, at our factory here in Taiwan. We're now in the harbour in Kaohsiung and we're going to go out and do some sea trials. This boat will be shipping to uh, Baltimore, east coast of the States, uh, for our uh, customer there at our, our dealership, Yacht Sales. So we've just started engines, we're getting ready to go out. We'll be testing the boat initially in the harbour at, at low speeds until we get the engine temperatures up. We'll be checking the bow thruster, the stern thruster, both hydraulic windlasses, all the systems, all the charging systems, generator, uh, air conditioning and hydraulics. Uh, once we're satisfied everything's good, we've got no leaks, everything's stable, then we'll actually clear out through immigration and we'll, we'll head offshore um, to do some high speed runs and we'll be recording uh, fuel consumption, load, RPM, various other settings uh, for the main engines all the way through the RPM range. We need to make sure that the propellers 
are correctly sized for the boat and its, and its weight. We sea trial all the Flemings here in Gaosheng, about 13 or 14 a year. And I'm here at the pilot house at the main helm station in front of the Fleming first mate system. So through this screen, we can monitor the engines, the generators, the shore power, battery systems, and how they charge, switches, breakers, what's on, what's off, bilge pumps, fire sensors, where the hatches are open and closed. And not only can we do this from this screen, but we can also do it from the flybridge helm. As well as that, uh, we have an iPad integration functionality. So you can be at home with your iPad and see and get all the information on your iPad that you can on this screen. And you can even turn items on and off. We're getting ready to go to sea. Um, so we're going to look at our central monitoring system here, which has a handy checklist um, that reminds us all the things we've got to do. Because uh, it's a complicated boat, there's a, there's a lot of things to remember. So straight away, a quick glance at here, I can see that our cable master is still out. That's our shore power plug. So obviously we've got to remember to do that. Uh, sometimes it's easy to forget. And we've also got some hatches open. If we look at the uh, plan view, we can see that our uh, main engine room hatch and our lazarette hatches are both open we can look at the main deck view and they're red so if they were closed they'd be green so I'll organize some crew to go and pull the shore power cable in and close the hatches and as they do it you'll see that the system tells us what's going on so you get a kind of live update um, about the, the status and we should see the hatches uh, change to green and then we'll uh, we know that our crew have done their job so that's the shore power cable coming in, cable master is in. And there's the engine room hatch is closed. And they're probably closing the lazarette hatch now, which is a, a powered hatch, so it takes a few seconds to close. And you see we've got a red light here, it's so now changed to green. So all our hatches are closed, our cable master's in, go back to our home page. We're now, we're now good to start the engines and get underway. So the first thing we do, we'll be switching on the ignition for each engine. I quite like to look at an engine page when I'm starting the engines. You get a lot more information that way. So I'm going to start the port engine first, and then the starboard. And I'm checking straight away to make sure that we've got uh, oil pressure. Here we're up to four bar, creeping up to four bar. Next job is to turn on the hydraulic pumps. This boat has a full central hydraulic system. So we turn on each of the main engine hydraulic pumps. The third pump is connected to one of the generators, and we typically use that when we're anchored for stabilisation at rest. So we'll use a decibel meter like this to check sound readings throughout the boat, throughout the RPM range, to make sure we are where we should be. And at Fleming we go to special lengths to make sure that the boats are super smooth and super quiet, so this is really important for us. Um, we will also use infrared heat temperature sensing guns, like this FLIR unit. We uh, will go down into the engine room and check the exhaust riser temperatures, oil coolers, and also the advantage with this is that you can scan around and it will show you visually hot spots, for instance, on electrical panels. If there was a loose wire or a connection, the resistance would cause some heat which would immediately show up on here. Right now the boat, I'm in the stern. That was me uh, demonstrating getting up onto the boat via the swim ladder from the water without assistance, which is a requirement for uh, ABYC and CE certification. After a sea trial, the Fleming crew will stay on board the boat for two or three nights and live aboard. 
And that's the time when you're away from the factory that you can really use the boat like the owner would. You can use the showers, use all the appliances, and it's a quiet time when you can pick up things and hear things that you otherwise wouldn't at the factory. Aidy and I are from, from quite different backgrounds. Um, Aidy is a trained mechanical engineer and uh, came into boat building from that, uh, straight from university. Whereas I uh, was an aircraft mechanic originally, uh, so I had more of an engineering background and I then went to sea, so I, I spent quite a lot of time sailing. Um, we're very different in our, our approach, but we overlap enough that it's a very complementary relationship. While Duncan says we've got very different backgrounds, we are about the same age, both from the UK. So grew up in the same sort of environment, the same sort of time. So that gives us, in terms of communicating with each other, we communicate very well. We don't always agree, which I think is a good thing. Uh, we don't fight, but we'll sit down and we'll discuss both opinions and work out. It, le it all, nearly always leads to a much better solution in the end. And so Aid is able to focus primarily on the design and the production here in Taiwan and um, overseeing a lot of so all the interior design, the cabinetry, uh, all the custom requests that we get from, from our customers and dealers. And I'm able to focus more on a, as a sort of liaison role with the dealers, visit a lot of boat shows, bring the feedback from the boat shows, from meeting customers back to AD. Um, and then with our combined experience, I, I think we end up with a, as a, as a very good team. So you could say that Duncan handles everything internationally outside Taiwan, and I handle all the production side inside Taiwan. One of the great lessons I learned from Tony is that there's no problem too big. You can just, no matter how big it is, you can break it up into small parts and tackle it one at a time. It, it, his amazing just determination when things don't seem to be uh, possible. Yeah, you, you, you don't you give just push up. Through. You don't give up, you yeah. keep going. You might sleep on a problem and, and the answer comes to you overnight which is great when it happens. Uh, and also the integrity. We, we operate a very honest operation. We, we don't lie to anybody, we tell it as it is. Um, you don't have to remember anything then. Um, life's much easier. Building a Fleming yacht, we're building somebody's dream. Quite often the owners, the buyers of Fleming yachts are successful self-made people who've worked incredibly hard their entire life and got to a point that they can retire perhaps and this is the culmination of their hard work. Each yacht is bespoke so it's tailor-made for them so we feel a great responsibility to make sure that all of that hard work and their dream and we, becomes we, a reality. It's got to meet their, their expectations Absolutely. and hopefully exceed them. Yep. Yeah. AD and I have both lived in Taiwan now for a, a, around 20 years. Uh, we're very hands-on. We need to be at the factory where it's happening. We've got a, a great team now. Uh, it's a small team. We're, we're only seven people in total. So whilst AD and I are sort of overseeing things, um, we've got a great team of, of young guys, engineers, designers, uh, CAD draftsmen who are able to do 3D renderings. Uh, each one's a specialist in their, in their own subject. Um, and they're really uh, the glue that keeps it all keeps it all together. Aside from that, Tonghua the yard itself, they have a workforce of just over 200, and they're the skilled craftsmen, uh, carpenters, plumbers, electricians, all the trades. Many of whom have been working uh, with us for uh, at least 20 years plus. And, and there's a great uh, pride of workmanship. As I said, a lot of the people who have been working here have actually been working from hull number one. Uh, we have carpenters, laminators, engine fitters, who've literally built every single Fleming that's ever come out of this factory, and that's over 35 years and over 330 boats. So that's some achievement for anyone's career. So they have incredible pride in, in their workmanship, and, and we're very lucky to have them. The team here at Fleming includes many family members. 
brothers, sisters, mothers, sons, husbands, wives, cousins. Uh, it, yeah. it creates a, a family atmosphere, doesn't it? It's a, it's a very friendly place to work. Uh, everybody goes above and beyond to help us. Uh, it's, a, it's very much a team effort and a, and a great relationship we have with, with Tungwa. Being part of a small team is great because we're very flexible, we're very agile, we can make changes quickly. If, uh, if we see something that's going to make the boat safer or more efficient, better for the customer or a better production method, uh, we can implement that change very quickly. We don't have to have a board meeting to make a change and um, it's, that's part of the reason why the boats evolve so, so quickly, hull to hull, not year by year. For instance, I could have a sketch, something, we sketch something in the morning and in the afternoon it will be realised. Uh, and we, you don't need approvals uh, and people to make that happen, you know. It, 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 it's fantastic. It's a real luxury as a, as a, as a pr pr in production, as a yeah. designer to be able to have that. Absolutely, and, and we don't always get it right. Sometimes, you know, we make a mistake, but I think it's not, it's not the mistake that matters, it's learning from it. It's how you deal with it. And um, so we're not afraid to try new things. It's, that's part of the process. Rather than a formal apprenticeship scheme here at Tongwa, all of the skills and the crafts are handed down, more often than not, from family member to family member. So we've got many teams of fathers and sons and husbands and wives, and, and they teach each other. That's how the, the skills get passed down from generation to generation. So we've now got, at one point, there was four generations of, uh, of uh, workers in the same company at the same time. And a lot of the staff who built the very first Fleming are still with us today. The uh, Tung Wah Yard where we're, where we're stood now is in uh, southern Taiwan near the port city of Kaohsiung. Uh, there's a long history of, of boat building here, um, starting with fishing boats obviously for the local community and then moving into uh, yachts and motor yachts. Uh, all export, primarily in the early days to North America. Um, it's declined slightly but the quality has risen. So the Taiwanese are very good at building complex semi-custom boats. There's no mass-produced yachts here, as there are in, in Europe, but they, they can build very complicated boats that are, be, that are all, all bespoke and it's all for export. There were, there were many yards back in the day, maybe 70 or 80, and over time, the number of yards declined, but the standout yards who were obviously capable of building high quality boats remained and have blossomed since then. So there's, you know, maybe 10 yards now around Taiwan who, you know, can put out good quality boats. And now Taiwan is considered, I think, globally as one of the best boat building centers in the world. As we build a classic yacht, use of high quality teak is important for practical reasons as well as the look and feel of the boat. We do offer other wood types and finishes, of course, but sometimes there's just nothing like the real warmth and coziness of a real teak interior, and no substitute to the feel and practicality of it, especially on the exterior decks. We also use teak for the bulwark cap rails for a traditional look. However, in recent years, we've developed in-house a composite equivalent, which is exclusive to Fleming. These look exactly the same as high gloss varnish teak, but are completely composite. Each section is moulded and coated with a durable finish, so maintenance is reduced to simple polishing. There's no need for any time consuming and costly varnishing, but the timeless look is retained. We are very fortunate that the owners of Tongwa had the foresight to make a big investment in um, solid teak logs many many years ago when they were still plentiful and uh, easy to import into Taiwan. So we have a huge stock of teak here which will hopefully last us many years. We use it sparingly of course because it's a finite resource. It's been many years since we've done any filming here at Tsinghua. Uh, Tony used to film here quite often and would make fascinating videos showing how the boat's put together and um, we're now doing the same. We know there's a lot of people 
uh, who, are, who follow Fleming Yachts. They're interested. Our YouTube channel is very active now, thanks mainly to uh, the content Tony kindly provides. And uh, if anybody wants to see anything else in particular, let us, let us know. Drop us a line, make a comment on YouTube. Uh, we monitor it. We, uh, we're, happy, we're happy to share what we're doing. We're very proud of what we do. I uh, hope you've enjoyed this, this insight into uh, Fleming Yachts.